Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic, heathenry related. My name is Jesse, and I am your host. Let's get into it. All right, everybody. Uh, hail. Yes, yes, yes. Hail. Hello, indeed. Um, special guest coming on the show here this week, my good friend Patrick Walsh. You know him. You recognize him. You love him from the High Lung Mental Health Spiritual Support Group on Facebook. Um, he's going to be joining me today, and we're going to be talking about why we are pagans, you know, why he and I are pagans. Um, but it's going to kind of open up, I feel, a, 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 a much broader question to the community. Why are you pagan? You know, why do you do the things that you do? And whether you're Germanic heathen or whether you're other, uh, other another sort of uh, variety of, of, of a polytheist, all right, it doesn't much matter. Just kind of curious, you know, what, what made us choose this path or what, um, what, uh, what, what gave us the inclination to pursue this path you know some people might say well, we didn't choose it um it just kind of came to us or whatever so we're going to talk about that stuff today and get get down into the the nitty-gritty details um before we do just want to remind you to please as always check the description area or show notes for the link tree link uh, of this podcast so you know how you can support what i do here each and every week um and, and beyond, you know, all the, the long form content, the short form content, just everything that I do. Check the Linktree link uh, out because it shows you all the ways that you can support merchandise, Amazon wish list, uh, Patreon, of course, like, follow, and subscribe to all of my so socials. Uh, that's the best way, you know, helps the the algorithm realize, oh, yeah, we need to get this out to more to more like minded people. Um, additionally from that, you know, we are fastly approaching the Shadow Moot event hosted by Raven Moonhearth in Springfield, Tennessee. The address is on your screen, along with some more information that you'll find helpful. Uh, if you want to come for the weekend of October 13th through 15th, it is $45 for the weekend pass. And what that includes for you is you get fed three meals a day. You get access to all of the rituals, workshops, storytelling uh, vendor booths, you know, um, and and uh, the games, of course, that are going to be going on there. It's a really great, inclusive, family-friendly event. Um, it is a primitive camping-style event, so if you do plan on camping, be sure to bring all of the things that you would need to camp primitively. So you'll need to bring your own tent, uh, sleeping bags, appropriate clothing. Remember, it is going to be middle of October, so the days can be warm and the nights can be chilly. So dress and plan accordingly for that. Um, also bring dry changes of clothes because, you know, the weather is what it could be and you never know it might be raining and storming. So um, barring any severe weather, you know, I know in the past uh, Shadow Moot has been a rain or shine event. Uh, they just kind of work around the challenges of the weather if there are any. Um, but if you do just want to come for one day, you can do so for $20. Of course, ch children under the age of 12 do come in for free. There are no pre-sale tickets. You pay at the gate when you arrive. Um, and if you are thinking of only coming for one day out of those three days, I strongly encourage you to come on the 14th, which is Saturday, because that's when all of the fun things that they have planned for Shadow Moot take place. The vendors are there um, usually in full force on Saturday. Uh, of course, the games, the ritual, um, the, the, the drumming circle, everything, all of the community-based stuff, classes, workshops, whatever. All that stuff is happening on that Saturday. So um, if you have any questions, there's going to be a link in the description show note for the Facebook event. Um, you can go in there and uh, ask anybody uh, questions that you might have. Greg is their chieftain, and he's kind of their go-to person when it comes to questions for the event. So feel free to reach out to him uh, directly if you need or want to. Um, and if you're watching this or listening to this on the podcast and you have any questions, that you want to just direct to me, I will surely do my best to get an answer for you. Um, but yeah, there you go. Shadow Moot's coming up here in just less than a month's time. My wife and I will be there. 
um, and we're greatly looking forward to it. Um, one last thing I do want to mention before we get Patrick on here today is um, if you guys haven't heard of a, there's a lot of like Nordic folk music uh, projects, musicians out here in the in the landscape of, of heathenry and paganism. And there's a lot of really good and talented artists, people that spend a lot of time, money, efforts into their craft. And one of the ones who I have um, fairly recently come into awareness of is if I'm mispronouncing the name, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, but he's a French musician and he is called on Facebook, at least. I think it's pronounced uh, Aeolia, E-O-L-Y-A. Um, really awesome singer, uh, musician, instrumentalist. You know, he's he's got the the lyre. He's got the the talaharp. He's got the, the voice, a uh, very, very powerful operatic almost voice. Um, information for him is going to be linked down in the description show notes as well. But the reason why I wanted to talk about him today is he's recently shared on his uh, social media that he has got a, a crowdfunding up on a site called, I think it's Ulule, U-L-U-L-E, so, or Ulule. I don't know if it's French, uh, uh, specifically a French crowdfunding platform, um, but there's going to be a link down in the description and stuff for that, as well as his link tree. For you to find all of his music he's uh really passionate about delivering the best quality of everything you know visual um audio um and he's a very talented producer like the the things that he does um in his in his home or in his his uh, studio rather uh, i don't know if it's a home studio but it, whatever he does he has a really good knack for it um and i was recently given the chance to help promote the crowdfunding um, that you see here on your screen and then down in the description or show notes um, so please be sure if you want to support an independent, talented artist such as him, that you check his crowdfunding out and, uh, you know, contribute to that um, in any sort of way. I believe the album is supposed to be releasing next month in October. Um, so if you want to help him reach that goal, um, the album that uh, is, is being released is phenomenal. Uh, I just want to say I've I've gotten a chance to listen to some of the songs that are on it, and I actually have a um, an early taste of the music, right? Um, and I've been jamming it since I got it. Uh, so thank you to Aeolia. Uh, again, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, for the music ahead of time. And thank you for doing what you do for the pagan community, for people to enjoy. Even if you're not heathen or pagan, it's really great music. You can tell he puts a lot of effort into it. Uh, so please check out his crowdfunding uh, platform in the description show notes and follow him by going to his link tree link that's annotated down below or over here or wherever you find it. All right. So now that we got all the housekeeping stuff out of the way, let's get Patrick on here and talk about why we are pagans. Here we go. All right, folks, we are here today with uh, Patrick Walsh again. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going? It's going good. It's going pretty good, I guess. You know, I just had some mechanical issues with the refrigerator that I was dealing with earlier. I was I was telling you about offline, but um, troubleshooting saved the day. So we're we're back rocking and rolling with that. How was your week? It's been pretty good. You know, just dealing with work and the daily shenanigans and malarkey. Yeah, man. They never seem to they never seem to go away, do they? No, it's just a, wrong with the punches, you know. Yeah. One flavor of this versus the one flavor of that, and next thing you know, it's onto this whole casserole of <laughs> shenanigans, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's good, though, man. It's good to see you here again. Thanks for coming back on the podcast. Oh, it's an honor and a pleasure. Uh, oh, yeah, and for everybody that doesn't know Patrick, you know, if you're new to the channel or you're new to the podcast, um, Patrick here has a Facebook group that is a big uh, dedication and homage to Heilung, uh, the Nordic folk, uh, Nordic ambient. I don't know what kind of categorize, cat category you would put them in, but they're all kinds of awesome. Yep. Um, and and Heilung, the, the, the Heilung Mental Spiritual Support Group uh, is Patrick's group here. So if you love Heilung and you are looking for a safe space to come with, uh, you know, uh, folks who battle and, and, and deal with and live with all kinds of 
things, you know, mental and spiritual struggles. Um, this is a safe space for you to come. Um, so please, there'll be a link in the comments or the description area of show notes for you guys to check out. And please be sure to, you know, uh, answer those questions that are asked when you join and, and come hang out with Patrick and everybody that's there. It's a lot of cool stuff that gets shared from all kinds of people. So yep. some great people as well that are part of the group as well. Yeah, man. There's also, uh, are there members of Highland in the group? Yes, there are. Give me one second. Yeah. Since my phone is going to plug into the fucking uh, wall here. Yeah. Yeah. Got to plug it into the wall. I just my phone there, so I got concerned. But um, <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, there are um, two to three members that are part of the group. Two, I know for sure, both named Alex. There's Alex Opozo and Alex Kappa. Both amazing man that I love and um, appreciate so very much. That's cool, man. You know, when uh, whenever you do stuff or whenever we do stuff and we have like a, a focus, um, whether it's like a, a music support group or a mental health support group, when you have people that are a part of that community, like the band or whatever in your group, it really like, I don't know, like validates the... It does in a way. It kind of does validate it too. Just, you know, you're not just making this willy nilly. You're having a sense of purpose and really, you know, inspire greatly from very awesome events that have occurred in my life. Yeah, man. I'm proud of you for what you've done with this, uh, with this group and this community. So I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, you actually um, are the reason we're talking about what we're talking about today. You hit me up. And we're looking to talk about what, why we are who we are, <laughs> why we do what we do, right? Why, why are we pagan? All right. What sparked that question with you? With me? Yeah. So that's uh, quite the tale, Sue. So I'm going to take my time here. So a little bit about me, anyone who hasn't known before, is um, I was raised as a Roman Catholic. Now, contrary to what many other people in this faith and path will say, I'm probably the opposite of what you usually hear. Me, though, I had a very close network of friends and family and support group that really guided me through some very messed up times throughout my early stages of de development. And that's, you know, being a, a baby, all the way from being a kid, and then before I was a teenager. And then from that point on, we moved places. But um, during that period though, you know, I had nothing but support and, um, you know, fellowship that really helped me and guided me through a lot of stages throughout my life. And then it came a point when I was in middle school that um, I just felt like it wasn't my path. So I started venturing and exploring the various different, you know, pantheons, religions, and, you know, belief systems and during that uh that stage of development i went through quite a few um pantheons and whatnot um some of which are buddhism wicca um and forgive me for saying this but again i was through the very you know unique uh stage of my life where i bounced back and forth i was really yeah, exploring stuck. exactly so um Fun fact, uh, anyone who's watching, uh, Jesse and I were both, you know, Freemasons at one point in, um, in our lives. And that's something that has a heavy um, Catholic Christian kind of like basis to it, I guess. But, you know, further study into that uh, order, I'm of mind to say that it has pagan ancestries to it. But yeah, uh -huh. the allegory, like the, the, the rituals and stuff are built around like Christian exactly. stuff. Like there, there's things, they're, they're Christian undertones or Jude Judaic undertones to the lodge and, and the body of the lodge and how it's kind of constructed. Exactly. Um, but also it definitely doesn't have like you don't have to be Christian to be a Mason. You don't have to. You know what I mean? Like that's not a prerequisite. It's, it's not like you believe in a higher community. power. That's all that really matters. Right. That's that's the position I am in various stages of my life as well. You know, it's just at no point in time did I ever not believe in a higher force because it may just be my 
my situation being born the way I am, but um, I was in a position I'm very grateful for to always see the sacred and all the paths and, you know, things that I undertook and took time to study and appreciate. So anyways, from that though, um, I moved on to, uh, you know, various paths, like I said, you know, varying all the way from, you know, the church of Latter-day Saints is the Mormonism group. That's very brief though. I want to iterate that very heavily, but then you messed um, around with the Mormons. Did you? Yes. Very brief. Really? Okay. It started off this, uh, a funny interaction is uh, one night I was drinking and they, uh, or sorry, one evening I was drinking, they stopped by and they ah. did the whole dog and pony show. I'm like, when I was listening to them though, I'm like, man, these guys have a lot of, a lot of cojones going mm. out and preaching the way they do but again that's you know a topic for another day i guess but i'm not trying to stray too deep into that but um i have a, a measure of uh, reference and respect to what they're doing so it turned into you know casual you know hey i respect what you're doing into like okay what else do you have to offer but then quickly after getting into that I'm like no this is not for me goodbye we're gone you know <laughs> but you know I'm not trying to leave any nasty notes or anything from that on that path, but you know, to each throne again. But um Yeah. Back retracing to my early steps and early stages in my development, I actually stumbled across uh paganism. And it's one of those times, you know, just like High Long when I first ex like heard of them, I was captivated and I entertained the idea, but it wasn't until later that I grew an appreciation and respect and understanding and full development into what that practice was. Now that's mainly towards paganism, not any other faith or practice that I did besides, you know, the Hindu faith that um still has some um some energies within me, you know. Sure. But, um, well I think know, there's um, a I just want to touch on that for just a brief yeah, second, not to take you do, not to derail you too much, but in terms of like <laughs> Hinduism, it's it's an Indo European religion. And Germanic paganism specifically has roots in Proto-Indo-European cultures. So, yeah, the polytheism there's, there's a link there. Yeah, exactly, and that's something I I really come to appreciate too. And something I find a great comfort in is you know, it's one thing praising and honoring a deity that's all-encompassing, but I feel like life isn't that simple. There are multiple elements multiple things that are going on that you know i can agree with the aspect that it's all collective and one but it's also very crucial and fundamental in keeping it separate and keeping categorized for the sake of development and appreciation and what we're trying to follow and appreciate and understand i think you've got a point there right to kind of keep things in their respective lanes uh it's fine to learn and it's fine to explore and it's and it's fine to gain that knowledge right um and i for one am, am of the opinion again this is just my opinion that once you land on something that feels right for you then it's time to then invest your focus into that thing and uh whatever other influences that have kind of you've picked up along the way kind of get fleshed and weeded out a bit. You know what I mean? Like, sure. There might be parts of your life that you lived and the things that you did while you were Catholic that you do now still as pagan, but the religiosity is, is much more focused on the pagan side versus the Catholic side. You know, exactly. that's kind of what I'm trying to say. Yeah, exactly. Is, right. yeah. And if anything, if anything, if you, you know, like me, if you set a path and you decide it was not for you, you have something in your corner. You have something to your advantage, I believe. You have an understanding and appreciation. That's something that's not very common nowadays. I mean, it might be, but just, you know, knowing that I have a knowledge of my, my upbringing, I have a level of understanding and appreciation, but that wasn't always the case though. Because going back to my early stages of my development, I once became a Satanist, which is the completely 180 of Christian and you know Catholic and whatnot. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, what that's more my rebellious phase when I was a teenager. That's like the true example of just being a black sheep and just saying, yeah. F you, I'm just not going to follow what you're trying to preach. There's more to this world than I see. But then as I got older, I started to really, you know, study and take the time to understand you. I've begun to gain understanding of various cultures and even to this day, I'm still, you know, I consider myself a Norse pagan, but also I refer to uh, something called great spirit and call it what you will. But I feel like the great spirit is, you know, that, that glue. If you're that person that, you know, appreciates various cultures and has helped you throughout your life, you know, mm -hmm. it's always nice to have a point of reference and to, you know, titles, unfortunately, is very necessary in the society that we live in. So it's nice to have that, that level and that, that, I guess, standpoint for people can either relate, understand, or just take the time that, you know what, that's not for me. So bye, have a good life, you know, but. You know, it's, it's helpful to know and who you're engaging with and what you're going to talk about and whatnot. Yeah. Why, why do you, um, why do you think that it was paganism specifically that resonated with you the most out of all of the things that you dabbled in and explored, you know, you could have landed on any one of those. I really appreciate that question too, because that really brought me to where I need to go to is um, what really moved me the most was the sense of community, warmth and understanding from where I was coming from. And knowing I had a little knowledge of the background helped a lot too, but just, you know, coming as who I am, sharing my passions and my plight, the, you know, being, it is what it is, you know, having that level of, you know, camaraderie and fellowship it changed my life on so many levels. And that was right around the time that I actually got into high lung. And that kind of coincided with my development and my spiritual practices. And I'm not trying to say that you should listen to music and make that your spiritual course of action. I'm not condoning that by any means. But for me, that was one of the reasons why I really dived hard into that faith and into this practice that I do today. So... <laughs> It's just, you know, like I said, you know, when I started this path, it's been nothing short of a blessing and has helped me tremendously, you know, from the, from the beginning into this very moment. So music was a big one for you, right? The, Absolutely. and the specific, the specific style of music that yes. bands like High Lung and maybe others. And the fellowship that, and the yeah. fellowship and support that came with that and really yeah sharing yourself and then you see the influences and really learn like for me like i said i engaged into the pagan path and norse pagan path for a little bit and i had some very special moments throughout that time and period in my life i wish i could remember what specific year it was but that year was those years were great mm. you know in the, every part of my life and development that i had really great moments of alignment you know all come from various stages and beliefs and that's something, you know, you know, anyways, more to the point, though, that's the answer to the question, though. OK, so you kind of were, again, in that exploratory path, you were like, all right, well, I did this, this, this and this. And now here's paganism. So let me let me look more into that. And then during that exploration is when you were introduced to High Lung. And that's the thing that kind of really put you in the direction right like that yeah. really kind of set the path for you is like this is where i want to be and this is the this is what i want to put my focus into right exactly gotcha i wonder if that's a lot for you know a lot of people too right because i noticed you know there's a i think there's a there's an underlying sense of community across religion too like Christianity specifically, at least, you know, from because uh, I was raised in, as, as, a, as a practicing Christian, you know, a non-denominational Christian. But then also I've been to Catholic mass. I've been to Pentecostal services. I've been to Methodist services. I've been to Baptist services. I've been to so many different denominations of Christianity, you know, religious uh, services. 
Um, and in any one of those, I always kind of felt like their people were there for them. You know, if someone was sick, if someone was needing something, yeah, you know, they had their community to fall back on. Um, so it's it's kind of interesting to me to hear you say that, or, or, or I don't want to put words into your mouth. But are you what, is what you're saying is that did you not feel that sense of community until you discovered paganism? I did briefly when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. when I was you know a Catholic and Christian, mm -hmm. and just had that underlying factor, and that's the main reason why I feel like those people were the way they were when I was growing up in the old grade school. You know, mainly grade school, because mm. we had that sense of understanding and um, relatability. Mm. Now, mind you, though, at the time, I was just a kid. Yeah. Now that I'm an adult, I understand that's why. Because we're all part of this community. You know, whether you practice every day or not, we're part of that community and that fellowship. Now, after I'd left that faith, you know, I, like I said, I dabbled from this to that, this to that. And then... It wasn't until Norse paganism that I really felt something calling out to me and really making me like, hey, you know, you're missing out on this. You dabbled here, but you should take it a little bit more seriously. And mm. here I am today, and I couldn't be more fucking grateful. Yeah. I think it's a really interesting point, too, that the community... Um, I think the quality of the community uh, is driven by the people in it, not necessarily the cultural or religious undertones that goes with it. I think it has a big part of it because specifically with North paganism or any other kind of Germanic heathenry, um, there's a really big emphasis on tribal culture. You know, you look out for your own. Um, you rely on your own. You are obligated to your people. They are obligated to you, right? So there's this underlying and inherent importance placed on that really close-knit, almost family. Well, not almost, but it, it is a family-like structure, you know? Um, and I think one of the things that people that come into this path discover is that there's almost a it, it, it's almost nonchalant or casual with how some people recognize this and i say that because of the overuse of the of familial titles across huge online communities right We're, i'm specifically touching on like the online paganism or online heathenry dynamic right where people that are looking for that sense of community that you found and that i found and that other people find uh think that automatically now once they find it that they're just part of this great big pagan family <laughs> you know what i mean right. it's not as and, simple as that either you no, know i don't think so i don't think it is and i think that the, the the idea of family is is overshadowed with this overarching community right community is community it ain't family you're not you're you're not brothers and sisters to one another just because you're you like the same stuff or you have an inclination to venerate or worship the same types of things or even believe some of the same worldviews and uh, values and, and morals and ethics, right? Just because you have those similarities doesn't mean that your family, that family thing comes on a much smaller scale and at a much more intricate level. And I'm really glad you touched base on that too because I had uh, an example I want to share. And part of me throughout this podcast, I might move around. It's yeah, do you think? Really we already know you, man. Yeah, you're good. I mean, you know, but anyways, um, touching on that topic, though, before I continue, though, I'm not talking down on our community and our path. It's just unnecessary heads up to anyone who's in this path. Me and you, we know where we're coming from. But um, that said, here we go. So last year I went to a, or sorry, this year I went to a Viking festival. And, um, naturally when i came to this festival i was assuming I'm like okay i'm going along but i'm gonna meet some really cool people this mm. that they will be welcome like yeah here we are but i went there and i felt like man 
it'd be really cool to have a friend, you know, someone who, you know, knew me and was able to partake the experience, you know, and enjoy it. Yeah. We're going solo, and that kind of reminds me also to the uh, the Catholic and Christian faith too. Is during my early stages when I was still practicing that. Every now and again, I go to a random church and just you know see what they have to offer, and I'd be sitting there and like you get these glances that you like. Who's this guy? What are you doing here? Why are you here? And you really? couldn't help but shake that feeling, right? And then. I'd be like five or 10 minutes into that. I'm like, all right, bye. I'm gone. It just, yeah. And you know, that's with every path that we follow, I believe is, you know, you're going to need some pagans. You're going to need some people that just don't vibe with you. And that's completely freaking cool and natural. You know, yeah. we need every, every spectrum of, you know, engagements to really understand and appreciate what we follow, be it, you know, jobs, hobbies, spiritual practices, you're going to come across people who share your same interests but don't vibe with you. And that's totally normal. And I feel like that's something that kind of gets overshadowed. You know, we think, you know, oh, hey, I'm from Missouri. This guy likes the blues. We're friends. Like, no, no, yeah. not at all. Not at all. See, that's the thing, though. It's like, again, a misconception. So I'd like to hear He's not thoughts. on that level, yeah. Exactly. What are your thoughts on that, Jesse? Like, just that false sense of, you know, community that's not really engaged or understood before undertaking that, though. I've talked about it a lot in different degrees over the years that, um, you know, one of the things that I think gets carried into paganism, is, you know, if you if you enter into a pagan path, polytheistic path, from leaving a monotheistic, specifically like Christian uh, upbringing or, or model of belief, I think that one of the things that's carried, the baggage that gets carried with you is that, you know, this, this brotherhood of man, of humanity, right? Brotherhood of humanity under this, the fatherhood of a deity. Right. And so because because that's a very com that's that's what is that's Christian doctrine, right? You're exactly. you're not you're not you're not born into the family, you're grafted into the tree because you know we're not you know the, the, the whole like Jews and Gentiles thing that you hear about in the Bible and all that. Right? Very often. You're not you're not you're not born of Israel, you are Israel when you become grafted into that tree. So there's this belief in, in Christian worldviews that you know, when you repent of your sins and you and then you're atoned and all this thing and you, and you accept Jesus Christ as your savior that you are now brothers and sisters of everybody else who's done that and that could be more further from the truth though it really couldn't though so there's that right there's that thing of oh, oh you know I'm 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 with my people now I I believe in Odin and Thor and and the gods and I the, the land whites and all this and now all of a sudden you're my brothers and sisters no yeah. man that that ain't it. That that that's not how this works. And I'm very I'm very careful about you know what I say with like regards to you know you're wrong um, because I I've also come on here and and said nobody can tell you that what the way that you're practicing is 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 the right way or the wrong way. If if what you're doing works for you and yours, then that's your heart cult. That's your practice. That's the thing that you need to focus on doing. All I'm saying. Is that the the thing that doesn't exist in in paganism, Germanic paganism specifically, Germanic heathenry? But the one thing that just simply doesn't exist um, is this idea that just because I believe the same thing or something close to you, that we are now family to one another, that we have this kinship between us. That that could you, be you could be a great true. friend and you could be the most awesome person and we could jive, right? Um, right. But we're not we're not kin in that degree. We're not we're not we don't share kinship uh, ties in that way. And then to, to your point, right, just because you're cool or right, like just because we like certain things, I may not jive with you. I, I my personality may grade your gear so bad that you're like, I can't stand this motherfucker. You know what I mean? But cool for you for liking what you're doing and being you, like, but I just can't stand your ass. You I'm going to use one name, one person right now. And this is going to be the only time I reference his name. 
I'm gonna give a clue though. I'm gonna give a clue. Ready? I'm ready. He is a prime example in my personal opinion, not a fact. So you guys might like this guy. I can't stand him for like me, but he's an inside joke between me and Jesse. But um Payne Parrish. He's a charlatan. He's not a true heathen. And that's very agony because he's an entertainer. He's he's an entertainer. Thank you. He's and he a- does what he does in such a way that captures the entertainer vibe. I mean, he's an entertainer for if nothing else. And he creates content that is entertaining. Exactly. But that's I don't know the guy. I don't know if he thinks or believes any of it. Um, if he does and he's like using that to Appeal to an audience, I guess. Yeah, appeal to an audience. I mean, you but almost... It. It's, it's an audience. That's all it is. But, okay, so, and and playing devil's advocate, right? Because, look, I don't listen to him, and I can't... I, I have the same, like, opinion of the guy, right? Like, I don't... Like, every time I see him, I'm like, ah, oh, cringe. Um, but playing devil's advocate, right? Like, could the same thing be said? Well, maybe not the same thing, but could something similar be said of any of the other like nordic folk type music and and stuff right like who the hell knows if mike schaefer from donheim is a practicing heathen who the heck knows uh you know uh einar selvik of wardruna what his practices are i think they're more authentic in the way they deliver it and i think that they are more in tune with what you might categorize or label as like heathen or pagan highlong especially with their the way that they deliver it, the way that they present themselves, the the ritual aspect of their performances, you know what I mean? The ritual theater of their performances. That's totally different than this dude with a half-buzzed haircut and a beard, you know, singing to the Valhalla and 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 doing this like super machismo. I can't, I can't do it. it. You know what I mean? Like it's right now, apples, apples and oranges, apples and oranges, right? Yeah, you're you're right. gonna have some people though that be like, "Well, if that, it's the same thing." Yeah, I, I, I digress, right? Yeah, you're <laughs> right. And that's the point right where we're getting across, though, is you know, even though you might meet a someone who has the same path, doesn't mean they're gonna get along, and that's something we should yeah. squash, you know. But also at the same time, it's an opportunity. Don't be dismayed. You might, you know, there's times where like I was working at my job and I was wearing my meal mirror at the time. And now some people are like, hey, that's a really cool necklace you got there. What is it? And you have a chance to explain it. Or when someone says, I like your Mjolnir. When someone says that, though, I'm like, all right. You practice. probably know something at least. You, you, know? you have to you have to have some idea that they might be practicing. And but all the same though, there's been people like I've encountered and we share an interaction briefly, and then that's that. That's the end of it. But then yeah. there are times we're lucky enough to come across, um, for me example, I came across this amazing guy on YouTube. I was, sorry, I was trying to learn a basic heathen ritual in this guy, like, you know, no reference at all, or sorry, but um, <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, I, I followed your channel and then we engaged with each other and Actually, fun fact I want to mention this live stream is very important, though. It was one year ago. We're sharing company with each other in person. Yeah. And that's an experience that you know, I'm still reliving right now. And despite all the bullshit that we went through, you know, I, I want to trade for the world. You know, we had a great time. But Jesse yeah. and I, we're an example that that fellowship became real and solidified. And we really had been doing nothing short of making memories and impacting each other on so many spiritual and significant levels. But that's the thing now. You might be lucky enough to come across someone like that. If not, it is what it is. Yeah, I feel like you will in time find someone like that, like me and you. What we should. Kind, rec- yeah, kind, the, the, you know, kind recognizes kind. You know what I mean? Um, if you're true and authentic to it, um, you're, you're going to put your focus and you're going to put your energy to it. And I think that goes back to the purpose of what we're talking about today right why are we pagans why am i not christian why am i not muslim 
Why am I not Buddhist? Why am I not Taoist? Why am I not any other things? Why am I not Hindu? Why am I not an atheist or an agnostic, right? Why am I not anything else? Why is it that paganism, specifically Germanic heathenry, right? Why is that the thing? Why am I that? Especially after having lived more than half of my life as something different, something that was antithetical of heathenry and paganism, something that abhorred it and something that, you know, spoke down of it and condemns it in something that the people who I was born and raised with and around and through have disassociated themselves with me because of it. Why do we choose to stay on these paths that have led to the heartache and that have led to the dissociation of family, right? Why do we do those things? Why don't we just go back to being a Christian or, or whatever to keep our family happy and to and to maintain those ties, right? For I me, they they've all offered something to us. They've all given us something to learn and appreciate and to understand about ourselves. And that's something you know is very important, you know, because like me today, you know, I'm still very much pagan, very much you know honoring the gods and my ancestors and my um, my deities and my great spirit. But I always have an appreciation of love, not specifically for my practice, but for my upbringing and for the opportunities and moments that it gave me and provided me through various stages of my life. And that goes hand in hand for where I am today and why I'm still on this path. Because this path has offered nothing but, you know, support and opportunities and that's something i don't want to stray away from i can't hear you sorry i was muted i uh <laughs> i i don't want to i'm going to say that i think one of the things that that paganism has offered to people um, and I'm going to speak for myself here because I don't want to overgeneralize or, you know, put something in other people's minds. I think one of the things that heathenry for me has taught me is that you are not a good person. You're not a valuable person. You're not a worthy person because of your religion. You are a worthy person. You are a good person. You are of value to your community by the deeds that you perform, by the things that you do. And your religion is just, a, a, it's part of you, it, it, it's part of your life and it's part of your practices, but it doesn't define you necessarily. I think that the morals and ethics that are associated with heathenry are, are very instructive to how society functions well. And so I think that inherently, if you're heathen, if you're, you know, if you adopt those those beliefs, then you are going to live in certain ways and do certain things that are constructive and, and help the community at large. But I don't think you need that to be a good person, to be Absolutely. a person who is of, of value, right? So I think that one of the things like why am I pagan is because it has helped me learn that I don't need religion to be morally and ethically good right i don't it's part of it you know but it's not the thing that defines me no, absolutely not. and i think when i was like when you know when i was christian you know like that was that was a very that was the opposite it's like you you you're only good if you're doing it this way if you believe this way if you follow this doctrine you know everything else is not good it was very one thing or the other. There was no, there was no opportunity. There was no area in the gray that was allowed to be explored. If you're either this or you're that, one or the other, you're in. And or that's, out. that's another thing too about this. Uh, making those transitions too is very difficult and very challenging too. Because for me, example, and I'm sure it's the same. I know for sure it's the same for you though. Is when we branch out and separate ourselves from the flock we dare to ask why 
we dare to ask these hard questions. And then sometimes hard questions come to hard answers or hard challenges to really push us to the limit. We're like, well, why do I do that? Because more up than that, we were following a path at such a young age. And that's kind of why I'm not very, um, I don't promote religion to children at an early age, but I can see why people would do that because it makes sense because you want to start them while they're young and get them while they're susceptible but i feel like that's kind of borderline manipulation too though. no that's that's absolutely what it is let's call it the way it is right that is manipulation it, 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 it's you're you're molding i get and i get it i, I get I totally it understand like you, and i appreciate the energy and intentions that go behind hey you're yeah. part of the state that's helped me and blah 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 but also shove it down their damn throat and like hey by the way Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior if you don't follow him you're going away you're not going to see your family again see that's his guilt shit and guilt yeah, shit. it's, it's, it's fear that. tactics man it's, it's, it's fear tactics us. exactly you know? right. it, and, 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 it, and it's using something that should be and was originally intended to be so pure and, and loving and beautiful and it's twisting in it it's twisting it into a uh, uh, just a, a a bastardized, vile version of that. It's, it's terrible and it's tragic how major religion specifically, because um, again, let's let's call it like it is. I don't see stuff like that happening with within pagan communities. The I see parents and and guardians and fosters of, of children who are pagans. Being very like focused on the the upbringing of their children, but they're not worried about the religious aspect of it. Like, hey, this is what I believe. We're going to incorporate these things into our daily lives. But there's none of this fear tactic going on to try and make them think that this is the only way that you should be. You have to be this way because I'm this way. There's a point in time that the child gets to choose, right? They've been exposed to this, but explore learn figure it out for yourself i've given you this kind of blueprint to work off of because you're my child and, and you are under my care and i'm gonna you know do those things to that i feel are morally and ethically right and good to do um but i'm not gonna guilt you into thinking that anything else is wrong figure it out learn discover explore and that's again why i'm pagan <laughs> we go back to that topic since that's the topic of the, of the show that's another reason why it, it allows for that growth and allows for that learning to take place. And that's what I love about it. Yep. You know, we're, it, doesn't not close so... any doors. it doesn't close any opportunities you may wish to endeavor, whether you'll know, be it learning more about the Egyptian culture or the Greek culture or whatever um, polytheistic faith. Because, in fact, if you're a pagan and you want to really experiment, in fact, hey, paganism's doing good by me, but I want to learn more. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. I mean, if you see something that has more to offer to you personally and as a person, you know, follow it. Do it. Follow your heart. Yeah. But more importantly, follow your heart. Don't base it off somebody you love and to care about. Because, like, there's been times where I see someone I really care about and they follow something like, hey, I want to follow and do this. And then you do it. And then you're like, mm. this is just not my cup of tea. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, just don't be afraid of being different. You know, follow what you follow. Do what you're going to do as long as it doesn't hurt anybody or anything like that. Yeah. And it's an interesting too, or an interesting part of this too, right? Because... We're using terms here on the show today that uh, could be categorized as overarching, right? Paganism. That's an overarching term. You could be Celtic pagan. You could be a Greek pagan or Roman, Greco-Roman pagan. You could be... Yo, whatever. Yeah, whatever, you know? Um, I speak more on the Germanic pagan side, right? The heathenry side. Um, and even within that... You know, there are things that could be considered um, dogmatic, 
right? Don't do this because of that, right? Like the the outcome could be this. We the, don't. Yeah. Um. And again, it goes back to the culture, right? Why did it? Why is it that way? Why did they believe it that way? If the tradition doesn't continue holistically, I feel like you're just kind of beating a dead horse. You know, it, it, it goes back to like, why are you doing what you're doing? What's the purpose behind what you're doing? If all you're doing is, you know, stuff because well, that's how it was written in the saga 1,200 years ago, okay, but have you found purpose in what you're doing when you do it that way? Or are you just regurgitating things because that's what was written in, in you know, by somebody, you know, 1,200 years ago? And find your purpose that's what's sad to say though i feel like a lot of people not in our community per se but like a lot of people are, were raised catholic or whatever faith and like well i'm here i'm not gonna change now to each their own again but um some people are really missing some really great opportunities to really discover yourself as a person and even though you might entertain or study this path and it's not for you again going back to what i said earlier you're gaining an understanding and in my opinion that works to, towards your advantage you know now anytime someone brings up that faith or topic that you studied and are familiar with you have a position of reference and really understanding what you're talking about and really give an honest opinion and feedback that's really necessary for someone who's trying to discover themselves and ultimately, that's what we're trying to do as people and human beings is find what works best for us, be it mm. pagan, Catholic, Christian, Buddhism, what have you. You know, it's just what works best for you works best for you. And we are going to come across people we agree and disagree, people we love and people we don't love so much. I'm not going to use the extreme age word, but, you know, there are people that I or influences and elements that I don't like at all and I do hate but this is my position as a person but you know that's yeah. like this despicable and people think, um, what's that one ass had um, his last name is Olsen or some shit uh, Joel Olstein oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's shit. sorry not sorry big evangelical um, types and stuff yeah. that all are in it for the money. All about the money and followers yeah. and all that bullshit you know and the same could be said for the heat in the community too there are people out there uh can't name anyone off the top of my head thankfully but um Peyton Parrish I don't want to say it's the same breed but he leans towards that in my personal opinion but that's just me being me and not yeah I mean you know is it pandering I mean probably a little bit um, but one of the things too like because you mentioned something that made me think of this um, about knowing what we're talking about. And and when you land on the thing, you know, executing due diligence to make sure that you're knowing what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Doing your homework. Um, I had a conversation with somebody... I say a conversation, but it was over. It was over a, a, a social media post that I made last week about a verse in the Bible uh, that references God. You know, realizing that His creation was failing, and the the the, the outcome was well, I'm going to wipe them out. Something about like the flood. You know, Noah's yeah, flood. I remember seeing that post too. And. Uh, so, you know, there was a guy who commented on it who I've known for a very long time and who I used to work with and who the line of work that he and I were in. Um, so, Rob, if you're listening or watching or you see this, buddy, I don't know if you're going to catch this because you know, I don't know the reach and, and, and if the algorithm is going to put it in front of you. But exactly, um, this was this was a guy who I literally went to battle with physical battle with I, I fought side by side with this guy yeah in the physical warfare sense right so when it when, when i talk about somebody who i would trust 
and 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 all that like we're we're talking about like a war band kind of brotherhood uh bond what do you there. mean by battle i have to ask like specifically huh? what kind of battle are you talking about oh this was uh, we were in prisoner transport oh shoot all right so okay. yeah and well, we had we had uh we had an escape happen in our vehicle oh wow um he was asleep and i was driving and we had two prisoners break out of the vehicle i took off after one he took off after another he literally jumped up out of his sleeper berth the, the sleeper bunk and ran with nothing but stocks on he had no shoes and that was the kind of guy that he was he's like i don't care if i'm barefoot naked or whatever if 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 something's happening i'm gonna be there with you kind of guy you know what i mean exactly. um but anyway it's like the the, the post you know, he's like um, going into like, well, you got to understand the context of the verses and, and you got to read before and after. I'm like, yep, I already know that because I literally grew up that way and I've read the Bible seven times front cover. Um, and like one of the things that that came out of that post, he's like, I'm not much of a student of the Bible, so I'm going to have to think about this. And I responded back and I said, OK. You ought to know more about your religion than I do. Because that's your religion. That's your faith. That's your path. And you should be able to wipe the floors up with the likes of me. Exactly. You know, you ought to know what you're talking about instead of coming up to me with like, well, this is what I think. This is what. No, man. Prove to me that you are a follower of Christ that you say you are. Or prove to anybody. You know what I mean? Like be on top of your game. You know? And that's one of the things, too, like, I think that, um, and I could speak to him in this way, because, again, I've known him for so long, and I've literally been side by side with him in physical combat. And so I could be visceral with him in that way. But the point being is that, you know, some people just don't take themselves or, or their religion or their, fa their, their, their faith, their path, seriously enough. And they're like, well, somebody else will, will help educate me you're like educate your damn self man learn the things about this way that whatever way that is that you are going to pick and in, in, in the direction that you want to go in like take ownership of it right sure be you know uh you can have mentors and 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 learn from people um but don't let that be the thing that guides you on how to think and one of the reasons why i'm pagan is that it really encouraged me and really pushed me into the path of discovery and learning things on my own right don't take someone's word for it find it out for yourself learn for yourself right be your own teacher in a way you know have a mentor have someone that you can go back to and bounce things off of and learn from right um but also don't neglect the due diligence that you should be executing by finding out the answer for yourself it's it's so easy to find it ain't like we're trying to you know climb the top of mount himalaya and 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 risk life and limb just to get an answer for a question we've got the internet we, we we've got it easy in comparison you know to, to even just the last 50 years of how how accessible knowledge is nowadays and sure you've got to sift through and weed through the minutia and 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 bullshit but i mean the knowledge is out there guys it, it, and and if you're not the way that i see it is if we're not you know, researching and we're not we're not putting that effort into it we're we're it, it's an affront to our ancestors it's, it's an affront to the gods it's it's we're, we're not doing it we're not doing ourselves justice we're not doing them justice right and so that's one of the reasons why I'm pagan too, is because it, it has instilled in me this sense of put in the work, go through the challenges, go through the ordeals, go through those things, because it's going to teach you a lesson. It's going to put in you this sense of, I got what I got and I, and I received what I received because I earned it. I I wasn't just given the answer. I found the answer. I went through all of those things that I needed to go through to discover what I needed to discover. And it's kind of like making fire, you know? I could light a match or I could, you know, 
lighter fluid or what have lighter you. fluid or a cigarette lighter or whatever and boom i got fire right or i could you know with flint and stone or friction or anything else like work to get that fire right the end result is i've got fire in three seconds or i got fire in 15 minutes well that fire that you receive in 15 minutes that you worked hard for that you had to like tend to and make sure that it took there's that satisfaction there's that reward sense right like i earned this the hunt is another thing too right you go to the grocery store you get your meal you drive through a fast food place you get your meal there's a different sense of satisfaction that we receive when we cook our own meal, when we grow our own food, when we slaughter our own livestock, all these things. You know, there's that sense of earning it. Um, that paganism has taught me as well. So. Yes, yeah, very valid point. So it's one thing to be blindly supported and blindly follow something. You're just doing yourself at the service at that point. Yeah. And that's the really cool thing about this path, though, is it challenges you and it pushes you. Sometimes that may deter a lot of people, and that's fine. Those people who are easily deterred, not talking down to those people, I'm just saying, it's not for you. Fire yeah. works not for you. Yeah. I mean, look, like that, and that's life anyway, right? I mean, the way I see it um, is life is full of disappointments it's like life is full of things that are going to really challenge your your physical your mental your spiritual fortitude right and if you're not preparing for that if you're not doing the things that are going to condition you for those times then those times when they arise are going to destroy you because they're gonna happen it's inevitable. It happens to everybody. Like things happen to everybody. So we can prepare ourselves as best we can. We can we can condition ourselves, I guess is probably the better term, right? Condition ourselves for those things that come up. So that way when they do come up, the blow that we receive, the impact that we receive is not so devastating. Yes, we're going to feel it. Yes, it's going to sting. Yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, it's going to suck. But it's but worth it. Yeah. We've conditioned ourselves, right, to when it happens, be like, ah, shit, man, that, that was rough. That was bad. I'm hurting. I wish that didn't happen, right? But we're not so mortally wounded. We're not so defeated that we can't rebound from it that uh you know it, it leaves us in the... it, it kind of reminds me um when i get over opiates it was so easy to stay on that path and not seek help it was so easy just to go down that road of self-destruction and not really seek any help or any support and just leave myself to an early grave i said no i had my accident i almost died i'm like okay well it's time to change some things and challenge myself and become the person I am today. Were and you while taking... I'm happy with the person I am today, there's so much work to be done. And that's something I'm working towards very soon and to this day. But that's the thing, though. Any true path that you love and follow that makes you hurt, it makes you question things, it makes you grow, you're on the right path. Hmm. As long as it doesn't hurt you or put you in danger, you're on the right path. But you just have to be mindful of your expectations and your limits and your thresholds you're willing to cross. And everyone has their own limits. You know, everyone has their, you know. Oh, yeah. That's right. I can't go past that. Yeah. Now, were, were you pagan at the time when that happened? You know? Were, no, the, you... uh, the upper us no. I was uh, I was kind of like nothing at the time. I Me, mean, I was, I believed in the Great Spirit, but I wasn't any particular denom denomination at the time. So, quick question, then, if you don't mind answering, um, uh -huh. did did that, you know, when that happened, 
was that any sort of like influence for you to kind of like figure your shit out <laughs> in a way? It, it was. It was. Land. For me, it really raised a really great point that I still to this this day is like, even though I had no particular denomination or fate to follow. I knew there was something sacred and special there that protected me and got me to this point. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, again, I'm not trying to say I'm not Norse pagan or what have you, but I'm just saying during that point though, you know, I didn't know what I was and who I was, but I knew there's a higher force and that higher force is, I feel like it's still with me to this moment and to this day, no matter what path I follow, no matter what course I take, you know, it's there saying hey you're still alive for a reason yeah. don't mess it up don't do it again don't you get on opiates again mother effort you know i'm just saying mm -hmm. that's right now i'm like okay good i hear you but um yeah perfect grateful to be alive to this day and to do what i do yeah man i am i am i'm grateful for your existence and for your life and i know a lot of other people are too um because again we wouldn't have what we have here today if, if it weren't for that so you know i think one of the things too that uh paganism like why are we this is, is that appreciation of life in general knowing that life exists in ways that we can't always see right the unseen another thing to mention too though is like we mentioned this at all uh, our previous video not me and you specifically but you know there are times that you follow a path, like this, for example, that you just have the best time in the world for the longest time, but then you get to the inevitable burnout phase. I feel like right there is the opportunity and perfect ground to really determine whether or not this is for you or not. And that's something I face frequently on this path. I'm still steadfast in what I believe in because I commit myself to this and I want to continue it and let it throw me to the person, a man that I'm meant to be. And that's my guidelines. That's my, my foundation as to who and what I am today. Jesse, what about you though? Um, so like, as far as like burnout. No, I mean, or... I'm not saying you had a burnout phase, but some challenging times. Oh, yeah. in your... oh, for sure, man. Like, I mean, and that's life too. Cause, um, you know, there's days and there's moments, right? Like, like we all face where we're just like, what's the point? Like, why am I even doing what I'm doing? What's the, you know, you start getting inside your head and you start over processing, you start overthinking those things. I mean, you in the sense of just like us, right? Like we, 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 we start really trying to overanalyze the simplicity of things. And I think one of the, one of the things that's helped me is like, this is just part of the human condition. It's part and parcel with what comes with us existing in this meat suit. You know, we're, 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 uh, we're burdened down with self deprecation in many ways, you know, and I see that a lot too. Like I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of person who will make fun of myself on a dime. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll roast myself easily, quickly, and, and, and give no second thought to it. And I've given thought to that, too, over time. And I'm like, but why? All right? Is it this moment of just realization that, yeah, uh, I am that. Like, I, I am that dispensable. I am that disposable. I am, I am that laughable, right? I am that joke. You know, or is it this underlying darkness that I haven't yet faced? You know, am I really just making fun of myself nonchalantly or am I believing any of that? And when I say those things to myself, am I reinforcing that? Because, our, you know, our, our conscious selves, I don't think, I don't believe at least, that we can discern the difference between what somebody says to us and what we say to ourselves. So this like self-deprecation is received into our unconscious self 
the same way as if somebody else were to say those things to us in a derogatory way. It's negative crap. And why would I want to feed myself with that negativity? I wouldn't want to be fed that negativity from anyone else. Why would I feed myself that negativity? Right? Because it's not doing anything constructive or good for my growth. If anything, it's poisoning the well and it's poisoning myself. So, I don't know if I answered what you were asking, but <laughs> I kind of look at it in a way of like, it's, it's so, it's, it's part of the human condition, right? It, it's part of what happens. It, it, it does. Um, but again, it goes back to what I was trying to say earlier was like knowing that and recognizing that and then doing things that counteract those behaviors. Right, conditioning ourselves to deal with it and be like, no, I'm not a piece of shit. Right? No, I'm not this. No, I'm not that. Absolutely not. Um, and that's again and, going back to what we're saying now is this is like what we respect and appreciate about this path though is like there are moments though we feel connected, inspired, and it's just so great. But then other days more often than not for me, it's like, there are days I'm like, why am I doing this? But then I'm like, well, that's why, that's why, that's why. But that's after a dark period of like, you know, self-doubt and self-criticism. Me personally, because, you know, I admit I struggle with self-love, but um, that's something I really love about this path as well. It's like, there's those times I'm lacking self-love and struggling and I'm not seeking love or support but that love support finds that way to me. Whether I seek it or not, someone or something happens. It's like, hey. Yeah. You're not. Brings you're that not balance. Gone. You're not. Exactly. You're not. And when you find yourself in that position, I think also that's a good, a good sign. I'm not saying that's a clear indication you're on the right path. But I'm saying that's a good sign. You know, you're, you're doing something right. You know. But also yeah. the same way though is like um, Papa mentioned this too in a post is like when you go out to the to nature it's a great the great sacredness you know of Mother Earth and you're like all right I'm gonna go to this place to go hiking and whatnot I'm gonna find myself but more often than not you you get there but your emotional baggage and everything you're dealing with is still very much with you you're at that sacred spot yes but you're not enjoying the sacredness you're just kind of like you're halfway there yeah i take the necessary steps to really put things in their place I'm like all right well i'm worried about this here you go i'm stressing yeah. about this well there you are leave so, it at the door exactly. in a way really give yourself an opportunity and chance to really find that moment that you're seeking. And more often not, Jesse, I know I've mentioned it several times, that sacred and important moment that you're striving for will not happen when you expect it. Mm -hmm. It'll happen when it's right. It'll when it's happen supposed to. when it's exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. Those are beautiful realizations, and it takes time to get there. Absolutely. You know? Um, and I think that's a good note to end on for the show tonight or for today or, you know, for folks listening, watching, right? Uh, don't be discouraged if you're in that phase of your journey that you just feel a little bit disjointed or disconnected from things. It's an opportunity. There's Learn some from it. days, there's just some days, to hope it I'm not cutting you off, but like there are some days so moments and so nights and minutes, hours, weeks, days, what have you, whatever applies best for you. There are going to be times that are just not that great. Yep. Push through it and see what tomorrow offers. If tomorrow's not that great, keep pushing on. Cause guess what? We're still here and we're still doing the best we fucking can. And that's all we can do. Not just the pagans or heathens or whatever path you choose to follow as a person, as a man or a woman, it's 
be the best you that you can be. Yeah, man. Yeah. I endorse that. I'll take I'll, I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, but that's really great, man. And I hope that people that have listened and watched this uh, episode have gotten a little bit of a glimpse into why Patrick's pagan, why I'm pagan, and maybe has helped solicit some thoughts within yourself as to why you are what you are, whatever you are. And we would invite you to share your thoughts about that, um, either in the comments of this podcast or in the, the poll or, or whatever it is that you see, you know, on the platform that you catch this on. Let us know. Why are you taking it? Why are you who you are? Why do you follow the path that you follow? It, it could help true. other people, too. That's right. I, I, and contrary to other beliefs, this is the system of belief and path that we follow that we encourage questions. Learn yes. more about yourself. Learn more about your environment. Because when you ask questions, you're really diving into yourself. Don't miss that opportunity. Don't be scared of asking hard questions. It could be unpleasant or it could be extremely enlightening. Whatever feeling and experience you have, embrace it and in moderation of course because it's very easy to get lost on the rabbit hole of intense feelings because i know jesse and i we've had these moments from and just like i'm on cloud nine but jesse's like all right but hey stay grounded and that's something i want to share with anyone who's watching the uh this podcast you know be mindful of your expressions and your, you know, enthusiasm because, you know, whether it be good or bad, the opposite is right around the corner. So it's important just to balance ourselves and Absolutely. prepare ourselves for the best and the worst. 100%. It's good stuff, man. And I appreciate you coming on here this week and vibing with me, sharing your ideas, sharing your thoughts and expressing you. yourself and being vulnerable in this way um stick around for a little bit afterwards because i want to just wrap with you for a second but for everyone else that's listening and watching this uh episode today thank you for your constant and ongoing support be sure again to uh check all the links that are annotated in the show notes or description of this video this podcast wherever you find them uh show the support and wherever uh you find it in whichever ways it speaks to you uh, do all the things that the fickle algorithm God so ungraciously demand. You know how it goes. Like, love, um, share, all that jazz. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but for everyone that's watching today and listening, uh, thank you again. And until we hear from you again in the next episode, may the God continue to notice you. And may your ancestors smile upon you. Mm -hmm.